than a month away. It's only right we start in a division with the reigning defending two-time Super Bowl champion, the Tribal Chiefs, Rogers' favorite boy, Patrick Mahomes, looking to become the first team in NFL history to three-peat. Real quick, the standings last season, Chiefs were 11-6, and six. Vegas Raiders, Las Vegas Raiders, 8-9, and nine. Denver Broncos, 8-9, and nine. Los Angeles Chargers with Jim Harbaugh as head coach now. Five and twelve, Bro Knicks rookie quarterback, Las Vegas Gardner Minshew, I guess, or Aiden O'Connell. I don't know. I think they're gonna be bad. But Raj, how do you see this division playing out with the West? I mean, come on now. This is one, two, three Chiefs. I mean, I mean, I mean, <laughs> we already know who's gonna win the division. Okay. Right. I mean, the Chiefs are gonna win the division. Uh now the question really should be. Who's going to be the second place team? I think it's going to be the Chargers. I think that Jim Harbaugh is going to plant his foot, or <laughs> he might plant his foot up somebody's ass, but he's going to plant his flag and, and at the Chargers. He may flag uh, that up somebody's ass too, right? Yeah, yeah it could go up somebody's ass also. But he's going to he's going to he's going to make himself known, and uh, the running game is going to be a big thing. It's going to be Ravens West over there, pretty much. The defense is going to get a lot better. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, the quarterback is going to look more consistent with his throws. Now, granted, they don't have the, as many weapons as they used to in, in the past, but that's OK. They have Gregory P. Roman over there. He's known for running the football. So that's exactly what they're going to be doing, running the football. And I think they'll probably have maybe an eight and nine record or a nine and eight record. But I think they'll make a lot. They'll be improved. Let's just say that they'll be improved. But. Other than that, um, I'm not sure what the Raiders are going to do this year. The Broncos are, are broncoing, but uh, the Chiefs are going to definitely win this division. I mean, it, it's just there's just no denying it. Patrick Mahomes is over there. We know what he can do. We've seen it in here in Baltimore plenty of times. So there you go. Dre, from one OTC to another, how you feel about uh, the Uh I'll be honest. I think it's just the Chiefs that make it out. I don't see anybody else. Jim Harbaugh, I know everybody's praising him, but um, is Justin Herbert going to be healthy for the entire season? They've they've taken some blows um, this season, losing some people, just like we've lost some people. Um, We mentioned the Broncos, and you know how I feel about the Broncos, as long as Sean Payne is coaching. And then uh, I think the Raiders are good, but they're still – questions about the quarterback position so um i think it's just the chiefs to win bottom line um i'm not saying they um they're going to three-peat though i'm tempted to say that but uh i'm not going to sit up there and then just um pick anybody else when i think it's just the chiefs division to win and there's too much good football going on in the afc Cremante, uh, every year you've been picking the chiefs i'm sure you're not going to waver this year okay i'm gonna put our hands in <laughs> One, two, three, Chiefs. Like, what are, we, what are we? This is not of all the divisions. This is the one where we can talk about the least. Um, I think. And Raj, I'll take a step for, further. I think the interesting thing is going to be who's going to finish in the cellar. Is it going to be the Broncos or is it going to be the Raiders? Because they have similar issues. Um, I think the Broncos. Oh, uh, sorry, the Raiders issues probably a little bit worse, more worse. Um. Because they have the quarterback position is is lacking, and you have a star receiver that's going to be unhappy, probably for the most part, for for the majority, the bulk of this year. He's going to get traded, right? You know what I'm saying. So he's going to ask for a trade probably at some midway through when they're two and six or something crazy like that. Um, The Broncos, I, I I just don't think that's good or around Sean Payton. Um after his debacle with Russell Wilson, I I just think he's doomed, he's doomed to fall on his face. And um I think the Chargers got it are gonna get it right at quarterback. I'm I'm sorry, at head coach. Therefore, Justin Herbert could take the next step as a quarterback. Um his stats will probably take a uh, a step back um in the box in the box score. So hopefully he could be more efficient because we know Jim Harbaugh runs that football. He's going to run that football. So I don't think Justin Herbert is going to throw for 4,500 or 5,000 yards, but if he can be more efficient, then they can at least maybe maybe tug on the Chiefs' cape a little bit. But Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, 
it is what it is. I think if a team can three peat, it will be um it will be this team. And no surgery needed for Marquise Hollywood Brown. So he may be ready for the start of the regular season. They aren't sure yet, but a shoulder injury as well. And don't forget they did draft the fastest player in the draft, Xavier Worthy. Because that's what Patrick Mahomes needed. Uh, another speed guy. We remember the last time he had a speed guy. Yes. Now let's he's all the, let's let's go in the highest. Now, now he's the number one player in the league, according to his peers. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna start with you, Cravante. I'm gonna swing back. We're gonna go to yeah. the MC West, the runners up in the Super Bowl, the 49ers. We know Brock Purdy for now. Brandon Ayuk is there, Debo, CMC just got paid. Trent Williams wants to get paid. The Rams were 10 and 7. They made the playoffs with Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup, Matthew Stafford is still there. How long, we don't know. Seattle, Mike McDonald from the Ravens, new head coach, 9-8. and eight. And the Arizona Cardinals, Colin Murray's healthy, Cravante. Marvin Harrison Jr. is there. We like my guy. I think they could be – I think they could I think they could finish better than Seattle. I, I'm not buying the Seattle hype, but that's just me. Cravante, how do, you, how, do you, how do you feel about this division playing out? Is it still San Francisco and L.A. as the top two or – one team gets in, or how do you see it playing out? Um, I think it's San Francisco, LA, top two. Um, in 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 San Francisco, LA, in that order. Um, I think they're playing for um, Gannon. They're they they they're playing they're playing they're really playing for Coach Gannon down in um in Arizona because they as a roster they really don't look they they don't have it they're they're lacking they're lacking quite a few things. Um, in Arizona, but they had their quarterback of the future and they had their number one wide receiver um, of the future. And hopefully they can stick together for the long haul. Um, Seattle, Seattle, new coach. Really don't know. Not, not too sure about the quarterback situation. We don't know. Geno, is Geno Smith going to be the guy? Um, is he going to take a step back? Um so it's it's a little concerning, but I think Arizona can overtake them for third. Um, I think the surprise team is going to be the Rams in the in the NFL NFC. I think the surprise team is going to be the Rams. Um, them being able to bounce back. The only issue is Matthew Stafford is is up there in age. He he's he's up there. I don't know. Can they keep him healthy and can he make it through? Um, through an NFL season, um, because they got they got some pieces over there. They definitely got some pieces, and Sean McVay, being the mastermind that he is, um, as a head coach and as an offensive guy, they'll they'll figure some things out. Um, and of course, San Francisco. I think similar to the West, to the uh, AFC side, to the Chiefs division. I think it's the 49ers, and then it's a gap, and then it's the second team. Um, Kyle Shanahan, another mastermind uh, on the offensive side of the ball. They're stacked everywhere. Even if they even if they lose Brandon Ayuk, that's still a very very stacked team. And they have a quarterback, even though it won't be for long. They still have a quarterback on their rookie contract. Now they're 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 all in until they have to play, play uh, until they have to pay Brock Purdy at this point. Um, but that that team is still very much stacked. And they should win a division going away. Go ahead, Eric. I agree with you. I think it's the 49ers to win. I do think that there's a gap, but I think that that gap is with the um, LA Rams. I think the Rams uh, can win some games uh, and be a playoff team, but they're not going to be on the caliber of uh, the 49ers. The 49ers is the cream of the crop in that division. Uh, you have Seattle and Arizona. Um, no, there's, you know, as much as Mike McDaniel's over there with Seattle, uh, and it's, you know, going to be, that's a good hire. It's not, uh, it, like you said, until they pay Brock Purdy, it's still going to be the 49ers team. And then, um, Arizona's just going to be Arizona. They, they, they ain't making no splash either. So I think it's just the 49ers and the Rams with the 49ers being the division winner and the Rams being the, Wild card. Go ahead, Big Rock. All right, man, this is easy. Uh, the 49ers are going to win a division. They're the best team uh, in the NFC West. Uh, Seattle's pretty good, but, I mean, I'm not sure if Mike McDonald's going to deal with Geno Smith. 
Um, I mean, we'll see what happens over there. They have the weapons, but like I said before, I'm not sure with him. Uh, the Rams, I'm with y'all on um, uh, Matthew Stafford. He has been banged up for the last couple seasons. Aaron, Aaron Donald did retire. Uh, this team looks like it's going through a transition right now, so I'm not sure how they're going to look either. And also the C, um, oh, uh, the um, card, the Cardinals. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong; they're they're pretty good. They have a pretty good squad, but Kyler Murray. I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, can he come back to form? Sure, but uh, that that division, like I said before, is tough, and uh, they don't have they don't have as many weapons as they used to have in the past. We used to have J.J. Watt. And a couple of other guys, but yeah, man. Right now is the 49ers to lose. But we shall see. I mean, we never know what's gonna happen with Brandon Ayu. So if he stays, they're definitely gonna win that division easily. But if he leaves, it might be a little bit of a question. But until then, 49ers. Let us know. Vote on the poll. Who do you have winning the AFC and NFC West? We both all agree. Chiefs and 49ers. And a lot of love for the Rams as a wild card as well. But we shall see how it plays out next week. We will go down south as we look at the AFC and NFC South as we inch closer towards the start of the 2024 NFL season. Cravante, are you ready to get goofy, my guy? Let's do it. It's time for Cravante's Goofies of the Week. Let's see if we can get goofy out here. Oh, yo, yo, of course. Something wrong here. Well, now that's goofy. Well, now that's jam. Mm -hmm. Stupid. Just stupid. Man, man, oh man. Um, it's been quite a few uh things, goofy things, um, going on. Um, including the Olympics, but let me not be rude. Let me get into the my uh my intro. Um, welcome, good people, to Goofies of the Week, sponsored by the Flex Zone. Appreciate you guys for giving me a little bit of time to let me tell the good people what I thought. Um, uh, what's goofy this particular week? Um, it's been quite a few. Uh, it's been quite a few things, but I'm just gonna keep it. Um, I'm not gonna talk uh politics, cause I'll leave it alone for a week. We'll we'll talk more politics as the <laughs> Raj. <laughs> we'll talk about more politics as it uh as it goes on. Um, but I think I just want to talk about, and again, I'm still getting trying to grasp an understanding of it. Um, and in grasping an understanding of it, I can still point out goofiness um where it is. And I know I talk about different levels of goofiness. I kind of just put it all together and um, try to figure out, we try to figure out a way to round it. Let's try to maneuver. Let's try to make, uh, see, see if we can talk about how to make these things not as goofy um, and make it better. And um, so we pointed out, try to figure out what we could do to make it better. Or we might just laugh at it and keep it going if there's nothing we could do. Um, so there was, um, for those of y'all that are not aware, the Olympics just ended, and um, the United States dominated in medals in a sizable, sizable gap. I want to say it's about thirty. It's about thirty medals or so between the first place United States and the second place person. I want to say the second person, second place person was China, I believe. Um, it is about probably about thirty medals um, or so in between. And um, the Olympic gymnastics team, I felt like dominated. They had the goat, the goat on her team, but the other young ladies um, pulled their weight um, as well. Now, there was an incident. <clears throat> we talked about it earlier. There was an incident between Miss as Jordan Jordan Childs, um. Uh, in the gymnastics uh, event. So apparently she has been stripped of her medal. 
and she had the bronze medal, which means she was in third place. And um, word on the street, well, not even word on the street because it's out there right now. It's happening. Um, she was stripped of her first individual Olympic medal after the Romanian gymnastics team challenged her final score. Um, while the U.S. is the U.S. appeal of that ruling was denied Monday evening, the battle for bronze is far from over. Now, um, in the competition of gymnastics, the scores are typically close. So we're talking about <clears throat> their scores. It's not just whole numbers. We're talking about decimal points, and the decimal points goes it goes a ways. So this in these type of competitions, it's really, really close because everybody's playing the top of their game, and the points are the the points are are, are really it's, it's really going to be tight. So if the top, you look at the top three, maybe in the top five uh, participants, the scores are going to be close. So Childs had an initial awarded score of 13.666. Um, um, and it placed her, uh, basically placed her in. I don't uh, like that 666. Uh, it's, it's, it's not the greatest. It's not the greatest. Maybe, maybe this was a score that needed to change. Huh? Maybe this was a score they needed to change. Don't um, you start, Raj. But <laughs> um, so, uh, so uh, the stadium erupted after Brazil's Rebecca um, got gold. The U United States gymnastics coach um, Landy uh, Landy filed an inquiry over child difficult difficult uh, difficulty score. Um, and that is a score in the gymnastics, not familiar. Um, is it minutes later, Childs noticed um, the judge's decision leaping up and down on as a stun um, Lanny grabs at the leadership board. The judge re revised her score by 0 0.1 point. Now, I was saying earlier that these aren't just whole numbers we're dealing with. We're going for the whole number and then we're going down to the decimal we're going to the numbers after the decimal point. Um, and it was revised by point, yep, point oh one. Um, and it gave her a 13.766 um score to clinch the bronze medal. Dre, we like this number much better. Um yes. so and the win was historic, um, making the first time all three positions on the Olympic podium held by black women great beautiful ecstatic we love it um and we're moving on so romania uh ended up challenging this and it was argued that the gymnastics uh team they did not get I, they have a minute to i guess they have a minute to put in an inquiry, inquiry or ch make a challenge on the play after the score is given. And it is, they're basically saying it was four seconds past the minute. So basically um, they missed the deadline of that, um, of that initial score. And uh, of, yeah, of her score, which meant that the 13 point number that we don't like to hear um, should have been upheld. And and which also meant that she was in fifth place and went to third place off of point one. So they're saying she should go back to fifth place and should not be um, and should not be awarded the medal. Now, obviously, this is devastating. Absolutely, absolutely devastating for her um, having a medal and then taking it away. This is giving, you know, Reggie Bush vibes, you know, what I'm saying not the Heisman, but having a medal and then taking it away. I think that's nasty work. Absolutely crazy work. Um, the U S which is kind of crazy. This next portion of it, the U S, um, says they have timestamp evidence that they basically got their inquiry in, in time. So, um, basically what makes this all goofy is that the time it takes for the appeal, I want to say it was, uh, five days 
or so in between from when everything happened to when a decision was finally made. So ultimately, they put her back at the 13 point, you know, those numbers, and which meant that she's no longer in third place. She's got, I think she's back to fifth place. And um, she has her medal removed. I think what's goofy is that I feel like there's no way that this should have taken this much time, especially after you already awarded um, the, the 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 player, the participant, what have you. Um, and we're not saying now I'm going to the NFL and sports just based in America as a whole. Once the game is over, the game is over. You know what I'm saying? Like the referees, we we've seen this a number of times, whether it be the NBA or NFL, where referees, the referees or whoever's in charge of the scoring or of the gameplay of it, put out a statement saying, basically, we messed up, our bad type of thing. Um, but they don't go back and change scores or change stats. It has been a couple instances where they change like stats, but it are it's stats that don't directly affect the game. I remember. I don't know if it was last year, year before last, but Giannis had a triple double taken away because of how he got his last rebound, but it did not affect the outcome of the game. It just doesn't happen. Like after the, after the game is over, the game is over. You know when they say final, um, it's final. Something back in the day, but it's no longer. Pe- oh, <laughs> yes, Mark. Yes, um, we did used to call that something. Um, but it's weird that it took, it takes so long. I don't know what it is about, and this is the first time, well, I'm not going to say the first time it happened, but this is the first time where I'm noticing it and it's being this big of a controversy. Like we're talking five days. It happened already. It happened already. The Olympics, Paris or whoever in charge of this, they need to go and hold that L and it is what it is. Like y'all make y'all made the mistake, put that out, whatever statement or whatever you want to put out saying y'all made the mistake. But nah, ain't no taking medals back and doing all that stuff. Like y'all get it's giving Steve Harvey vibes, big Steve Harvey vibes right now from the Miss America thing, you know. So big Steve Harvey vibes, and that's not the vibe you want to give um right now. So I think that's very goofy. I don't know what y'all think, but I think that's beyond goofy that it take it took this long, and then they still have a they and they still have and they still not only are they changing or like they're going back and like retroactively doing this, which I think is absolutely crazy. If it's not done before that thing hit final, I I think I think it should be a wrap, um, because again that's not fair. Y'all done had a po yet yeah, she was up on that podium. She was taking pictures, and uh, they had a very iconic picture, which is really, I guess, not not really a thing, um, not really a thing anymore. But uh, that moment was taken away from her because of a mess up y'all did, and I think that's absolutely not fair and very very goofy on the olympic whoever's on that committee the appeals court what whatever that thing is called those things need to be revamped if it doesn't happen before that event is over it should be a wrap so i think that aspect of it is quite 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 goofy but uh they all alter history i've seen it yep yeah all alter history is crazy um, but you know, it, it, it is, it is what it is. Um, I'm not going to jump out there and say the Olympics don't like black people or nothing <laughs> like that, but, um, kind of, kind of crazy that y'all took that moment away from those young ladies and specifically Miss Jordan. Um, but there's a thin, but, uh, y'all know my line, um, in this, there's a thin line between goofy and great and the Olympics is on the wrong end of it uh got to do better got to do better got to do better oh my gosh something wrong here (laughs) well now that's goofy 
Jam. Oh. Stupid. Just stupid. Thank you for that, Cravante. Those goofies of the week.